So let's look at one more example problem where we have a word problem involving either a cylinder, a sphere, or a cone. And for this problem, a french fry stand at the fair serves their fries in paper cones. The cones have a radius of two inches, let me remark that, and a height of six inches. It is a challenge to fill the narrow cones with their long fries. They want to use new cones that have the same volume as their existing cones, but a larger radius of four inches what will the height of the new cones be? And before we try to answer this, let's just draw a picture of the shape that we're dealing with. Since we know we have a cone, and remember that cones have circular bases, and every point on the edge of the cone will meet at a point either above or below the circular base. And again, we can draw these lines from any point on the edge. So maybe from here or from here, it doesn't matter. They will all meet at this bottom point. And what we're told is that we're going to use a larger cone than the one they originally used. And the original one had a radius of two inches. And this one will have a radius of four inches. So the radius that they're referring to, that is the radius of the base. And again, the radius is just the distance from the center of the base to the edge of this circle, and it's four inches. Now, we need to find the height of this new cone. And what we're told is that the new cone has the same volume as the existing cones. So let's draw another picture of the initial cone that they were using. And we know that cone will have the same volume, but a narrower radius or a smaller base. So this cone will likely be much taller so that they can have the same volume, that they take up the same amount of space. And this isn't going to be drawn exactly right, but we can at least get a rough idea. And we know the radius of this cone, this is two inches. And we're told what the height is. The height of this original cone is six inches. So we can mark that in. And remember the height, we can call that H, is perpendicular to the base and runs all the way to the bottom point here. So we can also draw the height in for this cone and that's what we're trying to find. So let's call this height H1, and we can call this height H2. And for our radii, we can call this R1 and this one R2. Now, to figure this out, we need to figure out the volume of this original cone and use that volume to figure out the height in our new cone. But remember the formula for the volume of a cone that it's equal to the area of the base of the cone multiplied by the height and then divided by three. Or it's one third of the area of the base, which since it's a circle, it will be pi multiplied by the radius squared and then multiplied by the height. So let's figure out the volume of this original cone and we'll use that to figure out the height of our new cone. So let's just start plugging in our numbers. We have that for this volume, which we can call V2 since we're using the subscript of two for this cone. This is one third multiplied by pi multiplied by the radius squared. So that's two inches squared multiplied by the height, which is six inches. And if we simplify everything, this is four square inches times six. So that would be 24. And we have square inches times inches, which will be cubic inches. We'll divide that by three and multiply by pi. And 24 divided by three is just eight. So we have eight pi. And again, we're dealing with cubic inches here. So that's the volume of the original cone and it's the volume of our new cone. So let's use this information to figure out what the height will be in this new cone. And we can say the volume of this cone, eight 
pi cubic inches is equal to one third multiplied by pi multiplied by the radius of this cone squared, which is four inches squared multiplied by the height, which we called H1. And this is what we need to solve for. So let's just simplify everything and solve the equation for H1. And to do that, let me make just a bit more room here. First of all, we can notice that each side of the equation has pi in it. So if we divide both sides by pi, these would cancel out. And 4 squared is 16, which means on the right side we get 16 square inches divided by 3. And on the left we still have 8 cubic inches. And on the right this is multiplied by h1. Then what we can do is multiply each side by 3 to get rid of this fraction, which means we have 24 cubic inches is equal to 16 square inches times by h1. And lastly, let's divide each side by 16 square inches, which leads us to 24 cubic inches divided by 16 square inches is equal to h1. And notice that we have inches cubed up top divided by inches squared. So two of those will cancel out and we'll be left with inches, which makes sense since we know the height is just a linear distance, it will just have inches as the units. And 24 divided by 16, we can simplify that they're both divisible by eight, which means this is now three over two inches. And if we want, we can make this a decimal, this is equal to 1.5 inches. So in conclusion, the height of our new cone, which has the same volume as our original cone, is 1.5 inches.